Erin Boyle is an associate editor at Gardenista and founder of the charming blog Reading My Tea Leaves. She spoke with us about how a love of history and a strong connection to spaces has influenced her life. I actually I started my blog in January of 2009. My very good friend Danielle had started a blog. And she was like, oh, you should you be such a good blogger. You should start a blog. I was like, oh. What does it mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like blogging. And I don't know, it was like a, just a nice outlet to be able to kind of do something more with my day. I just kind of threw myself into blogging. My graduate degree is in public humanities, which is kind of like a museum studies background. It, it kind of occurred to me that one of the things that I liked the most about the graduate program I was doing was the storytelling aspect. You know, the writing, but also the photography, and then the packaging, and kind of being able to have my hand in all of that. I finished my graduate degree and I continued to work in nonprofits for a while, but then decided that I really wanted to do the blogging stuff more full time. And then was hired as the associate editor at Gardenista. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming you were like getting a thought, like starting to build a following. What was that like for you? That moment where you're like, oh wow, I started just doing this, you know, because of a recommendation. And what is a blog? And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm being emotionally fed and people are Mm -hmm. responding. Blogging has changed so much in the Mm -hmm. past five years. So when I was starting, people were so into each other. And there was this real kind of blogging community. So I feel like it actually happened incredibly quickly. There's that challenge too of like striking a balance between kind of sharing your personal story and also maintaining some kind of, some things that are just for you. So I think that sometimes my personal blog, because I want it to be a place that's welcoming and relaxing and also kind of shares those sides of myself. I think sometimes there's this like illusion that everything is like so peaceful mm-hmm. and <laughs> so calm and really like it feels a little more frenzied than that in yeah. my life, you know? Yeah. Tell me about about your pregnancy mm. and <laughs> <laughs> what has been like the most surprising aspect of it for you? I mean, I think in some respects the most surprising thing is that it's just kind of life as usual, you know? Like, it's kind of amazing to stop and think about it. Oh my goodness, there's like a little tiny creature <laughs> growing inside and I'm giving it life and all that. But I also think it's like, I still wake up every day and feed myself and <laughs> dress myself. It's kind of funny, in my professional life, I'm like a real planner and I really like structure and like organization. In my life, like in terms of expecting a child or like God planning my wedding or like things like that. Um, so you live in Brooklyn. It's such mm-hmm. an incredible and intense city. Mm-hmm. And we love to hear about like the interaction of that. Do you see yourself here for a long time? A lot of times mm-hmm. like you get the answer like, I love New York for now. Right. But then I have to like, I'm going to have to do this. And yeah. Like what is your, what's your relationship in that way? I've always been very attached to places and spaces and like why I write about my apartment so much. Mm -hmm. I think that being in the city, it's one of the places where I feel like I have this kind of personal family history that is important. You know, I think thinking about walking in Morningside Heights and knowing that my grandmother grew up there, seeing the Cathedral of St. John the Divine and remembering her stories about waiting on the steps after catechism classes or (laughs) there are things like that that I think just resonate so much with me and it feels like I don't have that anywhere else and I think once you live in New York it's hard to live anywhere else to some extent there is this just like sense of it being so much bigger than you that is so kind of empowering I think in its own way like New York can also be like a call as home. It can definitely be overwhelming. Like there are some moments where you're like, what am I doing here? Like this is just so hard. The garbage smells so bad and I am so hot. And yeah. <laughs> like, my feet are black because I wore sandals today. Yeah. And I hate my life and I hate the city and I hate everyone in it. You know, like there are definitely moments where I feel that way. But I do like I think it t- for me it's like really 
it's the history element. Like my grandfather playing stickball like in Hell's Kitchen in the 1920s, like that's like meaningful to me that yeah. I'm in a space where that happened.